who laughs last, laughs best. And these celebs had us all in stitches. My real birth video. That was a children's cartoon. <laughs> Call Disney if you don't believe me. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who got the last laugh on haters. Each month, millions of gigs of unused data are taken back by wireless companies. Tragic. Data you paid for that could be used to see my makeup, my backhand, my outfits. For this list, We've looked at those times when celebrities or people in the public eye hit back at criticism or self-inflicted bad press by poking fun at themselves and subsequently turned a bad situation into a good one. I got four jobs. Hell, I'm more famous than half the people we talk to anyway. No one stands up. No one has the balls to sit them down and say, look, just cut the shit. Number 10, James Blunt. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Ever since the 2004 release of his debut album, Back to Bedlam, James Blunt has had to put up with more than his fair share of scathing critiques. The former military man is endlessly hounded for his high-pitched vocals, love-struck lyrics, and generally posh persona. I've been putting out fires all my life. However, above all those things, the bonfire heart singer has a solid reputation for absolutely owning his haters. James Blunt just has an annoying face and a highly irritating voice. James went, and no mortgage. Blunt's Twitter feed is awash with classy comebacks, self-deprecation, and the occasional your mom joke, giving him satisfaction and us some serious entertainment. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. Number nine. Iggy Azalea. I should have known you were bad news from the bad boy demeanor and the cat souls. The product of an internet feud to feast over. Snoop Dogg started it by posting an image of a woman without makeup and comparing her to Iggy, before stoking the fire further by sharing a meme in which Iggy's compared to Marlon Wayans' character in White Chicks. Nah, yo, hold my poodle. Hold my poodle. Hey, yo, what's up? Y'all got a problem? Y'all want some of this? You want some of this, punk? What? What, boy, what? Iggy initially looked lost posting a series of defensive replies that were continually deleted. But then she hit a Halloween party dressed for the white chick's role and brilliantly put the whole thing to bed. So fancy. I'm so fancy. You already know. Number eight, Barack Obama. You know, if I ran a third time, it'd be sort of like doing a third hangover movie. Didn't really work out very well, did it? If there's one thing that sets Barack Obama's presidential term apart from the rest, it's his legendary after-dinner speeches. L listen, you're in my house. <laughs> Few presidents come close to Obama in terms of charisma, with the world leader apparently a master at the charm offensive. As many of you have been briefed, uh, we provided additional information today about uh, the site of my birth. He even released his birth certificate in response to early opposition, before typically making a joke of that at the 2011 White House Correspondents' Dinner. Fact is, I feel more loose and relaxed than ever. Those Joe Biden shoulder massages, they're like magic. <laughs> Routinely making light of his ethnic background, sarcastically self-analyzing, or turning major political issues into quick one-liners, Obama often wins with wit. No one has seen this footage in 50 years. Not even me. But uh, let's take a look. Number seven, Danny Alves. No to racism. An international sport still dealing with regular instances of racism, football continually finds itself as the subject of unwanted and uncomfortable headlines. However, during the 2013-2014 La Liga season in Spain, Brazilian international Danny Alves responded to the racists in a legendary way. 
When taking a corner, Alves had a banana thrown at him by an opposing fan. A silly moment in the match, but credit to Dani Alves. He gets on with it. Unsurprised and unabashed, the player swiftly picked it up, ate it, and continued playing. His action sparked an international social media campaign, and his abuser was eventually arrested. Back of the net. Number 6. Sandra Bullock If ever there's a stage for last laughs to be had, then it's the Razzie Awards. It was at this annual anti-Oscar ceremony that Sandra Bullock won Worst Actress for her 2009 role in All About Steve. I think this is an extraordinary award, uh, and I, I didn't realize that in Hollywood that all you have to do is say you show up and then you get it. The famously down-to-earth superstar showed she had style by first showing up to collect the award, then giving a DVD of the film to everyone in the audience, and then threatening to reread her script. I'm willing to go through page by page my dialogue, so we're going to be here for a while. A great sport, she won an Oscar for The Blind Side the very next day. Way to answer your critics. Well, thank you. You obviously have excellent taste. Well, we appreciate quality and recognize it when we see it. Number five, Tina Fey, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and Patricia Arquette. Um, I I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just, I love all of you. I can't, I can't believe you're here. When Hollywood comedians take an introspective look at fame itself, the results are often well worth watching. Well, I just had an audition for Mrs. Claus. You're kidding me. I read for that part. I, I read for that too. You did? Yes. Hey, who got that? J-Lo. <gasps> oh, she'll be good. She's gonna be really good. Really good. Season three of Inside Amy Schumer opened with one such sketch in which Schumer meets A-listers Tina Fey, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and Patricia Arquette at an oddly assembled garden party. Is it, is it someone's birthday or? Oh. <laughs> kind of the opposite. We're celebrating Julia's last couple day. Yes. Salute. <laughs> the trio's toasting Louis Dreyfus's last day as a hot woman in Hollywood and giving a massive middle finger to the movie industry by doing so. A real problem. It's caricatured into comedy gold. What are you doing? I'm just gonna um, go home and wax my beard. When does that start? Number four, Eminem. When I say things about gay people and people think that my lyrics are homophobic, mm -hmm. you know, it's because I'm gay. Um, when I rap about violence Wait. or, you know. A notoriously outspoken performer, there aren't many sections of society that escape Eminem's controversial lyrics, some of which led the rapper to be labeled as homophobic in the early 2000s. My words are like a dagger with a jagged edge. It'll stab you in the head, whether you're a fag or less. Not a homosex, a map or a trans event. Pants or dress, hate facts, the answer's yes. Keen to clarify that while his words pack a punch, they don't promote prejudice. Slim Shady silenced critics in style at the 43rd Grammy Awards in 2001. By performing Stan alongside openly homosexual star Elton John and then embracing him at the song's close, M showed his true hand, and we tip our hat to that. Number three, Beck. An artist so laid back he's practically lying down. Nothing knocks Beck out of his super cool stride. Cut me down to size, so a surprise winner of Album of the Year at the 57th Grammys in 2015, the performer almost found himself being Taylor Swifted as Kanye West stormed towards Beck's microphone in protest. I need some help. I'm back. <laughs> the situation pattered down quite peacefully, but Beck's reaction earned him a legendary last laugh. I mean, he deserves to be on that stage as much as anybody, right? How many great records has he put out in the last five years, right? When interviewed afterwards, Beck praised Kanye as an artist and generally killed the rapper's ego with kindness. West's subsequent apology was sensationally sniveling. Number two, T 
Taylor Swift. So take uh, a look what you've done. Uh, Cause baby, now we got bad uh, blood. When Taylor Swift takes on internet trolls, she takes them to the cleaners. In 2012, a mean-spirited section of Reddit and 4chan looked to hijack an online competition that promised a Tay-Tay performance at whichever school received the most votes. The trolls targeted the Horace Mann School for the Deaf, finding the prospect of live music for the hard of hearing apparently hilarious. However, the prank brilliantly backfired when it inspired $50,000 worth of donations to the school, 10,000 of which was pledged by Swift herself. Shake that off. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. in trouble. I have to go. Number one, Halle Berry. Now keep it down. We've all seen that Oscar acceptance speech, right? Yeah. The one where Halle Berry wins for her role in Monsters Ball and subsequently balls her eyes out. Barry was ridiculed relentlessly for that, but she got her own back at the not-so-prestigious Razzies. Catnip. Her acceptance speech for Catwoman is a claws-out masterpiece in its own right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> I never in my life thought I would be up here. <laughs> Brilliantly parodying the Academy Awards, Barry takes the criticism thrown at her and turns it into hilarity. She really knows how to lose, and that's why she wins. I'll do what my mother taught me, and I'll stand here graciously. I'll take the criticism, take it as a lesson learned, and I hope to God I never see these people ever again. <laughs> do you agree with our list? Aren't you glad I pushed you into it? Which last laugh did we overlook? Absolutely, I thought she was gonna win. <laughs> Come on, she's Beyonce. For more top tens that'll have you in hysterics published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. So we can do this till about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs>